Yo, what's good, Josh? Boy, man, we're back with another video. I hope y'all doing good. Hope y'all staying blessed, man. We're back with another Five Boys to Improve Yourself video. This is part two. If you haven't watched the first one, you definitely should. I'll probably link it in the description. As always, I don't waste y'all time. I'm gonna get straight to it. And I would advise y'all to probably get a notebook or something like that to write this down because this is valuable information. So yeah. And by the way, do not be scared to comment down what y'all want me to talk about next. I'm open to whatever whatever topics it is. And if y'all want to join my, my uh, school program, y'all can in the description where I talk about everything in depth. And y'all can ask questions and I can make a video about exactly what y'all need. So the first thing is delayed gratification. This is very important. Delayed gratification is basically not satisfying yourself at the moment and saving that for a long-term thing or long-term goal. So for instance, you're working a job, you're getting your money. Now delayed gratification would be you putting that into a, in, into a retirement savings and saving it for later instead of you saying, I want the money now and I want to use it ASAP. Basically, it's like saving something that you think that you want right now but saving it for later on because it will give you a better benefit the biggest problem that we have is always trying to please ourselves at the moment and we don't even need to do it it's basically like how discipline works where you're doing what you have to do now to make tomorrow easier instead of piling it up and making tomorrow harder now what this does is that it establishes self-control because you're not giving into everything that you want at the moment you have to remind yourself of what you're giving up if you do say yes to this thing right now instead of you saving it for later or not doing it so that you can have a better benefit long term. This creates greater mental stability because most of the time we rely off of our feelings and our emotions. And if it feels good, if you feel like it's gonna please us at the moment, we're gonna give into it. But having that mental stability through delayed gratification allows you to have control over your emotions and control over your mind to where you know what's gonna reap you good and bad benefits. This overall teaches you how to work with your emotions and not against your emotions. And I always mention how our feelings never guide you in the right way. When you're mad, you do bad things. When you're happy, you do good things. But the problem is that you don't want to rely on the emotional aspect for why you should react how you do. We can't think about things on the surface. You have to look at the deeper picture of it. Because even if you have a good feeling about certain things or, you, or like you're in a good mood, it does not mean it will give you a good benefit because you might be feeding it to something that pleases you instead of something that is going to give you a better benefit in the end. The next thing is improving your fear of failure. This one's very important, I feel like, because failure is one of my favorite things to talk about, and it's something that I try to practice. Practicing failure will allow you to grow. Everyone associates failure with a bad thing, but failure can teach you a lesson, and not only that, it can build your patience. Failure can encourage your creativity, because although you fail doing it this way, you can think about other ways to do it a better way. This allows you to adopt a growth mindset to where you understand that there's more to learn, even though I've messed up. And in the midst of messing up, this is going to increase your resilience to where you keep going even past failure because you're trying to find a solution. Honestly, having the fear of failure is worse than failure itself because you're not even attempting to try to be successful at something. When you fail, it allows you to avoid the same mistakes in the future because you know what to do next. And doing this is going to allow you to adjust your future attempts. And honestly, the reason why I feel like it's so important is because people think about bad things and associate bad with bad instead of associating bad with getting a good benefit from bad. Although something bad happens in your life, it does not stay bad forever. It's all about the outlook and perspective you, you see it in. You can look at the glass half empty or the glass half full. You can think that, oh, because of my environment, I can't grow and I can't escape this. But there's others that think, yo, because of my environment, I can grow past this because I don't want to be there no more. It's crazy because the only thing that stops us is our mind, is ourself. We're the only thing that will keep us from going forward because of the fact that we either let the outside narrative come in to our thoughts what people say, other opinions, what we see, and we create standards of what things are supposed to look like, when in all reality, we can, we can create what we want. You don't have to feed into other people's expectations and what they deem as good or deem as successful. There are different versions of success, and it's all about how you view it. And one of the best benefits about it is that what can you lose from feeling? It's the fact that you tried. If it doesn't work out, go to the next thing. But at least you know what will and will not work for you. Now, this next thing is something that I got to get back into, which is reducing your screen time. I get it. You're scrolling on your phone and everything. I do the same thing as well. But sometimes you have to understand when to balance it, bro. We let our phones consume us so much to the point where we don't even look around us. We be having our heads down in our phone so much. And it's a whole robbery or something crazy going on. That's because your head is so stuck in your phone. You don't even see your surroundings. Not only that, we be having our headphones in our ears and listening to music mad loud. And then we don't hear if somebody's screaming for help or something like that. And we just walk in. And that's what puts you in the worst situations. Our phone is one of the biggest backstabbers because it's like there are so many pros in terms of communication and com convenience, but there are so many negatives when it comes to what it does to your, to your mind, 
what you feed yourself and the messages you hear and not only that the effects on your eyes being on your phone for too long will cause eye strain and everything and i would just, i would say definitely invest in blue light glasses blue light is what comes from our phone and that's what allows us to get the headache in the first place but if you have blue light glasses it blocks the blue light and it allows you to less like have less headaches and you you can go on your phone for long periods of time but you still shouldn't do that in the first place get off your phone and network with people explore the world be in nature do something go on a hike enjoy outside bro your phone's always going to be there but experiences outside are not going to always be there so it's important to at least appreciate the day take some time out the day to go on a walk and you know get that mental clarity too much of one thing is always bad so it's good to kind of take a break and find a balance in between and the worst thing about it is that it disrupts your sleep so much because you're on your phone you say oh i want to go to sleep at like 12 o'clock or 10 p.m or whatever boom 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 and then you get on your phone and now you're up till two three in the morning and now you get no sleep and so being on our phone and mindlessly scrolling it's like we're like a robot because we're just like scrolling 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 and the worst thing about it is that time goes by so in the time that you're telling yourself oh i'm supposed to do this do this do that and get certain things done you're on your phone scrolling and then that leaves room for so much procrastination because you're not getting it done due to you being on your phone and that's why it's important to have a break from it because it gives you the mental clarity and your mind's not fogged up with all these bad things social media has its pros but there are so many negative effects in terms of what it can feed you there are so many things you see, so many gruesome posts and negative things that are, that are going on through social media that we feed ourselves with and that we get off our phone and have that energy towards people because of what we see. What you feed yourself is going to end up coming out on you at some point. If you're around people that always are toxic and you're in bad environments, it's going to end up coming out on you at some point. So when you distance yourself, it gives you that clarity and that cleanse internally so that you're able to move a little bit better and you know you can see oh, like, dang, I do need a break from this. I got to start doing this differently. And this goes with music as well because you're listening to all the negative things that they're saying and now you're going to repeat the same words and you act the same way in person. Why do you think whenever you hang around somebody for too so long, you end up picking up their habits or their lingos? It's because you keep hearing it, hearing it, hearing it and it becomes like a melody in your head and then you keep repeating the same thing. So it's the same thing with social media. Whatever you keep seeing so much, you end up having it stored into your mind. And so whenever you use your phone, Use it for the right reasons. Look at informative videos. Try to follow people that are motivational. Feed yourself for all the right things because now it forces you to be productive. If you're only seeing positive things, you'll only look at things in a positive way. If you're only seeing negative things, you'll only look at things in a negative way. So I would definitely say protect what you feed yourself. Now the next thing which allows you to do everything in the first place is prioritizing sleep. Sleep, I feel like it's so overlooked because everyone thinks, so oh, I can survive all for five hours, four hours of sleep. I can get through the day with like a Red Bull or something, but you never end up functioning properly. Sleep promotes growth in every single aspect, whether you're in the gym or anything, it's going to promote growth and reduce the risk of injury. If you're not sleeping well, then your body's not going to recover properly. And everything I tell you, I want you all to research this and look at it yourself because I'm not going to give you all you know, false information. It's stuff that you can go on Google about and, and really see yourself. We all see how we act on four nights rest and on a half nights rest and, and what the difference is. You might feel off balance when you get up. You might feel like you have brain fog. You don't remember certain things. And it's small things like that that can affect your day and it can affect the productivity of your work. Going to sleep early will allow you to think clearly and everything. You can't try to work against your body and say, oh, I'm going to stay up all night and then drink a Red Bull or something to stay up. At that point, you're going to send your body into overdrive. Imagine a phone having full storage and you're trying to keep taking pictures while it already has full storage. It's not going to function properly. It has no room to, to, to even receive more information because it has no space. It's very important to listen to your body. And if it's tired, then go to sleep. Don't force yourself to be up. And I know certain times you might have work or whatever, but that means you have to start setting things in place so that you don't have to worry about that in the first place. Don't let your body deal with everything you did the night prior and then have to still work. Give yourself a break. Calm down, get some rest, and then work on whatever you have to do the next day. Because ultimately, this leaves your body in stress because you're still thinking about whatever it was the night before. You're still lacking sleep. You're thinking about being tired. You're thinking about so much things at once. And just getting that sleep gives you so much mental clarity. Now, last but not least is establishing a routine. This is one of the most important things because now you can get everything I just said, and now you can put that into your routine. One of the main things you have to understand with starting a routine is you have to understand who you want to become and what your goals are. So once you figure those things out, decide what has to be in your routine. Decide what you have to give up, what you have to sacrifice so that you can be successful in the future. Ask yourself questions like, who do I want to be and what does it take to be that person? Once you figure out what you want to do, it's time to set small goals. And if you have big tasks, break them into smaller actionable steps to make it easier for yourself. Lay out a plan to figure out what you have to get done. And then from there, prioritize what has to be prioritized so that you can understand what's next. And if I want, I made a video called How to Become Disciplined. It's one of my past videos where I speak about the exact same things and what it takes and what you can do to become disciplined as well. Make sure that you're organized. Don't make it confusing for yourself. And then track your progress. 
track what you're doing to see if you're even making progress in the first place and then from there you can see what you need to change in order for you to make progress anyway and don't view this as a bad thing you can still have fun in the midst of doing this because you're doing what you love in the first place so why not make it fun don't just be so hard on yourself but understand that it's a journey and enjoy the journey and just be patient but i definitely say there are certain things that we love doing that we have to give up for the sake of our success I feel like establishing a routine and writing things down was one of the most important things that something I always preach is because you see what you have to get done and it gives you a clear understanding. When you have everything you have to get done in your head, it's harder to execute because you might forget certain things and it slips up in your mind. Invest in like a whiteboard or a chalkboard or just have a notebook and then just write down the plans and I'm telling you, your goals will be achieved way faster because you're doing one thing at a time and it leads to a bigger goal. Doing these things are going to allow you to improve yourself by a margin. You're going to be ahead of 99% of people because no one's trying to do this in the first place. No one's organized. No one really has a routine. Everyone's just stuck in their ways and just let, let the time go and they're just letting every, everything fly. No one's sleeping when they're supposed to sleep. They're on their phones. They are please themselves at the moment instead of looking at long-term goals. So imagine how much more ahead of the people you are just by doing these simple things, bro. Always remember that any single goal you have or any step when it comes to improving starts from your mind. If up here is not ready to improve, you will never improve. But if you're close-minded, you're going to never allow yourself to grow. Always be open to the concept of growing because there's so much to learn. There's so much possibilities. And there's so much people you can speak to and you can network with to learn things. I definitely say networking is so important because you really see people's perspectives and how they view things. And that gives you a certain outlook on life to where you know exactly how to apply what you heard in certain situations you're not going to apply what you already know but different perspectives but that definitely wraps up everything in this five ways to improve yourself video part two and if you guys have any more questions just comment down below and if you guys want to get you know serious with this stuff i can join the free the free school program as i've mentioned uh, early on in the video where i get down with every single topic and you can ask questions even in the comments you can ask questions about what videos you want me to make next and i'll make those videos and as a reminder remember that it's a journey and not to be so hard on yourself but to have patience and enjoy everything that you're going through Find peace in the mishaps and the struggles and learn from it. Get back up. But as always, be safe, stay in your word, keep putting God first, and stay blessed.